Okay, guys, how are you today? So we'll wait for some people to get on here. And I'm calling this a no BS coaching session. So I'm just going to make some notes here as we go. But I'm going to be visiting with you guys to help you help you transform your life from the inside out. Hey there, gracefully, thank you. Uh, while we've got some people logging here on here, I do want to say a couple of things. Moving a little slow. So I'm going to just share. It's more work for me to be abridged than it is to not be abridged and tell the truth. Is I'm getting over having uh, the big C virus. You know, the, the C word. And... <clears throat> I'm pr I'm pretty healthy, even though I had a, a you know heart failure 18 months ago and a stroke nine months ago. I'm healthy and I eat well and I exercise and I take care of myself. And my brother-in-law, the shaman, has had me on health regimens for quite some time. And I've noticed for people that have the big C, people fall into a couple of different categories. One is I'm not recovered, but I'm getting there, Deborah. Thank you, thank you is people fall into different categories. And you know what's so interesting is the entire, and if you don't agree, fine, you just don't watch. I mean, I'm not here to argue with anybody. And I've been in the healing field for a lot of years, is that people fall into a couple of different categories, as I was saying. And there are people that might get it and have no symptoms. Or <clears throat> one of my good friends, He's a triathlete, 60 years old, triathlete. And he got it, and he had it for like four days, and he was over it, you know, like a cold. And then I got it, and two other people at the same time. And for two, I'm moving a little slow today. For two weeks, it knocked me out flat. I mean, I was like knocked out where for two weeks, I've never been as exhausted in my life and didn't know a person could be that exhausted uh, for two weeks. I mean, it's so exhausting that it was work to pick up a fork and eat. It was work to brush my teeth. I mean, it was just, I can't even ex explain the exhaustion. And the third week, I, I, the reason I'm sharing this is two reasons. One is I'm moving a little slow. We'll see how long we can go today. But it's my intention to be very active on Instagram going forward. I mean, like, really active with you guys. But what was I saying? Because I'm, 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 I'm still gathering on my mental faculties after this. Oh, so a good friend of mine, he is a health and wellness, like, he's just into it big time. He owns a health and wellness company, a free plug for him, called Organifi. And it's all natural product very high-end product that's like juicing. You can juice vegetables, but now you just mix it and you... Guys, don't ask quite yet. Let me get through this, okay? Because I don't want to lose your request. Um, but he's like, Jim, you need to do IV therapy. Yeah, I'll be, on, I'll be on here a lot. I promise. I'll be on here a lot more. I love Drew. Exactly. Drew Cannoli. And he's like, bro, he goes, get on IV therapy. Let me send you my nurse. And I didn't use his nurse, but I used another nurse that does IV therapy. And they use um, what's called NAD. And apparently, it's, it's a hormone that we need that by the time we're 50, we've lost 50% of it in our body. But it helps us heal very, very quickly. And the day the nurse came, she gave me a cocktail of NAD, NAD, glutathione, is it glutathione or glutathione, whatever it is, uh, vitamin C, and vitamin C complex the next time. Thank you. It's so good to see you too, healthy. And there was something else in it. But anyway, the day that she came the first time, I kid you not, I mean, I was here in my home office, my partner and I, even we didn't know who had what, who passed it, stayed in different parts of the house. Yes, NAD is extremely important when it comes to aging. This is why, um, now, yes, I do know, uh, Saad Guru. 
Um, this is why we don't heal as fast when we get older. I have no dog in this fight. No, no, I didn't receive his art piece. Um, anyway, um, I was out. I mean, I was pretty bad. I, I knew I, I knew I was going to heal. It's just a matter of when. I knew I was going to heal. And guys, when it comes to healing, that's the number one thing is expectation. I mean, there's medical research on this, the placebo effect. I knew I was going to heal. I just didn't know when, and that was the hard part. Because when you have the flu, we all know you get the flu or cold three, four, five days, boom, you're starting, you know, you're better. This here knocked me on my ass. And yeah, everything's mental. Everything is mental. And I knew that I had to continue to play um, a strong mental game while I was sick because I was sick. Um, I was fortunate. And if you need to go to the hospital, go, please. But I was fortunate that I had um, high blood oxygen. I had no fever. Um, I had a cough and I was tired. But I, I didn't have anything that they would send me, no breathing issues. And the nurse came and she's like, your breathing's completely clean. And your, your blood oxygen is at 98%. They say if you're below 90%, you need to go to the ER. And that was at 98% every time we checked it. And I was breathing fine. And if you're breathing fine, they're not going to take you at the hospital. They'll send you back home again. But anyway, let me share this with you. And I'm not pushing any, I am not pushing anything. I'm not prescribing anything. I'm just telling you that to, get, to go back here, I was flat out on my ass, not knowing when I was going to be back again. And the nurse came on a Sunday afternoon. Exactly 24 hours later, both of us had had it done. I was up and about. I mean, I was like, what? What happened? I mean, this is amazing. And I've had it done every two days because I have this and I have something else coming up big next week I want to tell you about. But guys, that NAD, I'm sold. I'm sold. Now, being back, I had planned on being here every week. I did. And then this little tidal wave comes and knocks me on my rear end. So I'm back now and I'm planning on becoming even more active than once a week. We'll see on Instagram. Because I want to connect with you guys. I can help you when I can connect with you. Um, Awaken, I've covered all that in here, what I've done. Yes, my brother-in-law also, um, he said, do as you wish. He had me on, I'll share with you guys. Uh, the nurse told me to get on some things, which I was already on, which Don Javier, my brother-in-law, told me about. Um, and I've been on it for a year, so I'm really surprised that I picked it up. And the three people who picked it up are three of the healthiest. And my, fam my family was together. And the three people who picked it up were the three healthiest people. That's a shocker. But my brother-in-law told me um, we should all be getting D3. I'm making notes here. D3 with the K2 mixture. Um, don't just take the D3 by itself because your body can't process it. And too much of it is toxic for your body. D3, K2. I was taking 10,000 IUs per day. And when I got hit, he goes, increase your dosage to 150,000 uh, D3, uh, D3K2 per day for as long as you have the symptoms. And I was up to 150,000. Uh, the unit measurement is, is IU. I think it's called international unit. But I was doing that for like 10 days every day. With, yeah, vitamin, and the nurse came and she goes, you need, you know, D3. I'm like, I'm on D3. Research, science has proven people that kick the bucket from COVID generally have a secondary condition. People, this is what I was going to say earlier. The whole world is running around talking about a cure and a shot. What about strengthening your immune system? What about that? But no one talks about that. We have to strengthen the body, all of our bodies. And I'm speaking from experience, okay? You, because a lot of you guys know what I've been through in the past year. Thank you, Angie. Thank you. 
So he said D3, K, make sure there's K2 with it. It's got to mix. Otherwise, you're putting too much D3 in your body. Um, something he's always told me, I'm just making notes because my, my brain, I'm tired. I mean, I was doing really well about 30 minutes ago. I'm a little tired. I just want to make sure. Um, is also um, oregano oil, fine oregano oil. It's in the video here, Brenda. Uh, fine oregano oil. You can't take oregano oil, just like, like even a drop will burn the crap out of you. You put it in your mouth, just being open with you guys, is, yeah, no one talks about human, immune support. It's all, go get this shot, save your life. If you need it, go get it. I support that. But what we should focus on is healing the body, not it's, I saw this, I saw this meme online. It talked about Louis, Louis Pasteur. And his approach was, is that all the fish in the fish tank, you vaccinate the fish. And there's this other older science, a couple hundred years ago scientist. He's like, you don't vaccinate the fish. You clean the water bowl. And that keeps the fish healthy. And that's the same thing with us. Hey, Eric, is we have to clean the fish bowl. And so many people, and especially in the U.S., eat shit for food. And I want to make sure I'm congruent in what I'm saying. I only eat healthy. So it's, I'm kind of an anomaly that I got it. And the ones that did that were gathered. I'll go back to the, my list here in a second. Yes, critical thinking is required. I'm going to get to my T-shirt in a minute about that also. But... <clears throat> Yes, exactly. Uh, DeVarts, exactly. I can't go into all that today, though, um, for sure. My brother-in-law's talked about to ground yourself from 5G. Go out and put your, your feet, connect with Pachamama, connect with the Earth, to ground yourself from the electromagnetic effects of 5G, which is everywhere. Okay, so D3K2 and just 10,000 IU a day just to keep yourself healthy. Um, it kind of sounds weird that I said that, that I got it, but that's what he told me. Um, and I think it actually, the D3 helped me uh, big time. Even though I was sick, I think I would have been sicker had I not been taking the D3 um, oregano oil. And as I said, straight pure oregano oil, you can't drop it in your mouth because it'll burn the crap out of you, one drop. And when I was sick, I had all these tinctures that Don Javier had given me lined up on my counter, and I was just tired. One night I meant to take some uh, D3K2. I picked it up, squirted it in my mouth, a whole dropper, and it was a whole dropper of oregano oil. And I'm like, this is the last freaking thing that I need. I mean, I ran to, I'm not even going to get into the shot and all that. It's just too, too controversial for most people. Uh, but I ran to the sink and spit it out and burned the inside of my mouth. So be careful with the oregano oil. I usually dilute it. I, I take it two ways. Number one, oregano oil is I put like three drops three times a day. And I started that internally once I, I got the big C. Three drops three times a day in extra virgin olive oil. Just three drops, a tablespoon of, of olive oil, and take it. I swallow it. Um, but for just rinsing bacteria in your mouth, it's a good way to keep your gums uh, healthy, is oregano oil and three, four drops of, of like olive, uh, coconut oil. Don't swallow. Just swish your mouth for 30 seconds a minute and spit it out. Uh, so oregano oil, extreme, medically proven, extremely, extremely healthy. And garlic. So I took copious. Yes, rosemary is great too. But, but... Oregano oil is a very, very, very medically proven, powerful, astringent, antibacterial, antiviral. So you may want to look into that. Okay, enough about that. Because I'm crazy, one of my students sent me that, and I tend to attract um, outside-of-the-box thinkers. People that, let me go back here, one of my favorite movies don't judge, is Tommy Boy with Chris Farley back from the 90s. And there's a character, Dan Aykroyd, in the movie. He said something, and it's being a little judgmental, but it's being observational, that I find to be true. 
He said, what the working man doesn't know is what makes him the working man. Now, what I mean by that, there's nothing wrong with being a, a earning an honorable living. But what he was really implying is what people don't know is what makes them just the masses. Can you guys, I, I don't see where I'm frozen. I see now where you say you froze, but I, I've got, there we go. Okay. So I tend to attract, let me be a little careful here with this. I tend to attract the crazies, which are me. And that means the, I'll take the butcher's word for it. Okay. Someone else has seen it. So yeah, I watch stupid movies. I mean, dumb and dumber. I mean, I watch good movies too, you know, like Shawshank Redemption and stuff. I like good movies, but you know, there's sometimes you just got to sit down and watch a Dumb and Dumber or, you know, Tommy Boy or something like that. Caddyshack. But anyway, um, you know, in the U.S., we have we have a reading level of 10th grade. No, the 7th grade, sorry. The average American reads at a 7th grade level. The average American is pretty clueless. And I'm just saying that. I mean, it just is what it is. But that's not just average Americans. That's all over the world. And I'm going to get to the questions in just a minute. So, guys, why in the world would I listen to the masses preach to me about COVID or health or wellness, or money, or anything, when generally they're uned the people that are preaching this crap are uneducated, um, undereducated, ignorant. And we're all ignorant in different ways, but you know what I mean. And some just plain out stupid, I'm just being honest. And there is a, I can't believe they spent money on this, but it's called the, uh, what is it, the Dunning, the Dunning-Kruger Experiment. I don't know when I read this, maybe five years ago. I'm going to be just be candid in the way that I say this. Is that what we would call stupid people. You ever notice that the, the less that somebody knows, the more they'll argue and try to be right? Well, there's a psychology behind that. And the Dunning-Kruger um, research, which is pretty much just observational, just watch. They could have paid me to tell them this. Is that people that aren't that bright aren't bright enough to know they're not that bright. Where I work from is, I don't know anything. Even though I'm here, and I, yes, I mean, I know some things, but I don't know anything. I mean, I, don't, I know one language and I mangle that one, English. I mean, I let my participles dangle and sentence fragments and I can't play any musical instruments. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't, don't any other, you know, I don't know shit, but all these people that think they know everything about world economics and and COVID and and public policy and foreign policy and all this kind of stuff are generally the ones that know nothing about it. But then they argue and tell you how stupid you are when they don't even recognize they know nothing about it. But again, that's called Dunning-Kruger. So the reason I tell you that is I'm crazy. I tend to attract, and this is all that I want to attract, is human beings that choose, that want to think outside the box, that want to think outside of the mass think that we are fed by our cultures and our families and for sure, and if you don't believe me, just do some research. I've done a shit ton of research over the years. A lot. 25 years worth. We're fed the most crap by our governments. Um, why? Because there's agendas. And the agendas are financial. What was his name? Rothschild. Uh, Baron Rothschild back two, three hundred years ago. I'm going to mangle this quote, but he said something like, I care not who makes the laws. Let me control the money. When you control the money supply of human beings, you control human beings. Think about that. So you guys, anyway, I'm just, that's why I share that because if you're one of us, and it doesn't mean, even mean a new ager, um, a lot of people get into spirituality, and I, I've been there. I've been on my path with a shaman, as you might know, for 25 years. I'm perking up a little bit. Um, 
a lot of people that are in the new age don't even recognize that they're many times criticizing people in the organized religion when they don't even recognize that new age in itself is an organized religion. So think, observe. A couple of more comments and then we'll talk about something else that, then I'll open up. A lot of research, I've done tons of psychological credible research and read it and studied it for years. Hi there. Um, is that as human beings, our perceptions and what we see is very skewed. And there's been tons of research that have demonstrated that we think we see something and we think we have the whole picture and we don't. Anybody ever seen the video? Forgot what it's called. It's on, it's on YouTube. It's a very, very famous video of these people passing a basketball. And they say, count the number of times the basketball at, is, changes hands. Yeah, you're, I'm getting fired up. Yeah. And so you sit here and you watch the video of all the times the basketball changes hands. And then, then they say, did you see the gorilla? And you're like, what freaking gorilla? And you go back and you watch it nice and slow and you look for the gorilla. And the gorilla walks through while people are playing with the basketball. But your focus, yeah, the bear runs through it. Hey, Dr. DeMarco. Hello. But we're so folk, we are where our attention is. You've heard me say we are where our attention is. And the masses, their attention, think about this. The masses, their attention is on groupthink. Think about that. The masses, their attention is on let me think like everyone else. Because people want to be accepted. And I've learned in my life, and especially with Don Javier, the shaman, is I don't want to be part of the masses. I want to be with the crazy dudes like you guys. I want to be with people that are waking up. And many years ago, Don Javier said, he goes, people think we're Looney Tunes. I love Les Brown. I started listening to him in 1992. I don't listen to motivators anymore, but he's good. And Don Javier and I were sitting down talking back in the 90s. And he goes, people think that people like you and I, they think we're Looney Tunes because we don't think like them. And I introduced somebody who's now worked with Don Javier for 20 years as an apprentice as well. And after I introduced him to Don Javier, yes, Tanya, he said, he goes, I'm sad. I'm like, what are you sad about? And he goes, when I'm around you and Don Javier in that group, he goes, I hear you saying things that are crazy, but you're all very sane people. And what I've come to realize is either you very sane people that I think are, is sane, are sane people are crazy or the rest of the world's crazy. And he goes, I think I'm losing my grip on reality because, thank you, thank you. He goes, Randy, um, he said, I think I'm losing my grip on reality because I've watched the whole world live this way. And I don't, after following you and being around you, Jim, and Don Javier, I don't think like that anymore. And that's why the best thing we can do is go crazy. Literally, just go crazy. Meaning be you. Be you. Be who you are. When I say go crazy, it doesn't mean literal mental dysfunction or mental you know, disorder. But when the masses run that way, I run that way. Because the masses are wrong. And I'm wrong too, but not 90% of the time. And the masses are wrong 90% of the time. And when I say I'm wrong, I don't think I'm an expert on anything, even though I'm considered an expert at the stuff that I do, transformation. And that research shows that experts are wrong 20% of the time. There's only informed opinions. That's it. There's, we only have, we are all only, for those of us that are, and I'm, I'm still informing myself on a lot of stuff, nothing more than an and form exactly Sam, you'll be nice. Nothing more be nice, play nice, than an informed opinion. And that's it. 
And that's the best we can do. Okay, one more thing is <clears throat> next Tuesday on the 17th, I'm doing a money master class. You guys know, listening to the podcast, I grew up poor. I mean, we broke a shit. We didn't have money. And my dad made the equivalent for a family of five, the equivalent of probably what's I'm just looking at stuff here because I'm gathering thinking for the for Q and A in a, mo a moment. Thank you. I'm getting there, Steph. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Is we didn't have any money, and you know I started thinking last night. I shot a video. We're doing. I'm doing a money master class. Honestly, it's it's not free. Um, it's not expensive either. Just a few bucks. Uh, next Tuesday, August the 17th, and I cover the foundation psychologically of money, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it up a lot. I've done it once before. I think once before. We had 1,300 people on it last time. And I'm going to change it up in that if what worked, when people talk, I'm not to the questions yet. That's in about three, four minutes. If what really worked regarding making money and earning money and being wealthy and financially secure, yeah, we'll record it, is if that really worked and that shit Excuse me, that's just how I talk, okay? Fuck it. So, if what really worked about how we make money um, and the schooling and the education and this and the money management and all this stuff, for the most part, if that really worked, then 80% of the U.S. population alone wouldn't be broke. We live in more opportunity right here in the U.S. than anywhere in the world. And 80% of the population is broke. I'm getting into the questions in just a minute. And what I show you guys is I learned long ago, and this is where I get a lot of my content. I don't listen to what people say. I've read all the books, blah, blah. I've read 5,000 books. I've got probably, what, I don't know, two, 300 books in here. A lot of them are just rehashing the same thing. And so much of even what's taught is wrong doesn't work. You've heard me talk about Think and Grow Rich. Great title, by the way, Napoleon Hill came up with, as I heard the story, I don't know if it's true, is his editor told him, if you don't come up with the title for that book, we're going to use Use Your Noodle to Make Boodle. That was the original title from what I've heard of Think and Grow Rich. And he slept on it, and it came to him, Think and Grow Rich. Yes, we can think and grow rich, but people don't know the process of thinking. And what to think and how to think and ways to think and especially ways to think that create wealth. Guys, I don't mean this in any way because I don't like people who brag. It annoys the crap out of me. Uh, that's my lesson, my learnings. I just ignore it. But, I mean, I'm in my home. This is just my home office. I mean, come on, guys. I, I, you know, I mean, I have, a, I have a good life. I've got a Porsche parked out in the garage. Beyond that, beyond that, I wear ten dollar t shirts. I mean, I'm, sure, I don't care. I, I don't care. I mean, money's not a thing to me, but I have a nice car because I like to drive, and I have a nice home because I think we should all live well. And our homes are our temples, and they should be they should be sanctuaries for us. But the world has taught you wrong, and hi, Jeannie. And if it didn't, then all of you would be rolling. And not to make it define who you are as your identity. No, money doesn't define me. Because guess what? When I had a stroke, I didn't give a shit about money. Or heart failure. I mean, money is just a tool. And the way that I use money is money is a tool to build my team bigger, to build my marketing budget bigger, so I can reach more human beings, to grab them by the collar and say, let's wake up. Let's change the world because we can do that in our consciousness. Thank you, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm honored, seriously, from the heart. I'm honored to serve you guys. That's why I'm going to do more lives. I need to be doing them. And, guys, it's our job to wake up. But anyway, the money program, and then we're going to get to Q&A here. The money program is I show you. And then I also, I think I have in, in one of my, it's called the inner circle. And you can't get into my inner circle until circle you go through the transformational coaching program. Stay hydrated. 
And I said, I said, guys, what's the, what's the number one strategy that you've learned from me that's not psychological, so to speak, meaning it's not just words. What's a strategy? Thank you, but, but the, but the immersion group, the full group is mind blowing compared to the self study, but thank you, uh, because it's all immersive. And drink the water, hell yeah. Okay, and I said, guys, what's the number one thing that's tangible that actually put money in your bank account? I don't want to know about money that's coming. I just want to know what, what, what made money for you? What bought that? People will say, what bought that house for you? What bought that BMW? What put your kid through college? What? And there were 126 replies as of earlier today. And 90% of them fall in two categories. Um, things that I've taught. It's, it's even in the Money Master class, but I'm going to pull them out and accentuate because I agree with them. And I'm going to build on them in the Money Master class. There's no way in hell, no matter how much you want money, you think you're going to get money, what you're going to work for, unless you integrate these two processes into your daily thinking. And that's how, why I was being a bit of a butthead, but I showed you my office, is that's how I got the the money. Is and I make the kind of money, I attract the kind of money. And believe it or not, guys, I'll tell you a big secret I've never told anybody on in the Instagram live is I'm very generous with other people. I mean extremely generous with people. And I mean really generous with people. I have a nice watch because it's titanium and I wanted a titanium Omega watch. Got a Porsche and a nice home. Beyond that, I don't buy myself stuff. I mean, I don't, not a big deal. Things are not important to me. Like I said, don't, don't attach to, uh, don't attach to things because they're just things. We're all going to leave the planet. And when we leave, unlike the Egyptians thought, that shit ain't going with you to the afterlife. Okay. Feeling good. I love talking to you guys. Let's let's see some Q and A. Let's see some ants. Let's see some some hands pop up here, and let's do this. And we're gonna see how far we can get today. And I'm gonna interact with you guys. And I wanna I wanna bring bring something that you know the thing about self hypnosis audios. There are a lot of work. I'd love to. Just I haven't yet because you, you can get them online. Um, you can get a lot online. Thank you so much, Jeannie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, oh, sorry, go to my bio, the link is in the bio, and there's a full money back guarantee, and I tell people all the time, you guys know this, come on guys, somebody hit me up with a question, is, I'm not here to take your money, there's a bunch of assholes online who are going to do that, that's not me, I'm here to serve, I don't care about the money, I'm here to serve, and if you don't feel like I did it, just request a refund, within 24 hours, done, no argument, no nothing, I don't care. I, I, I want to serve you. And the only way I can do it is showing up and playing full out. Apply what I teach you. I, I promise if you apply, if it's up to you, you apply it, your life will change. Okay. What, how do I act around the masses? I don't hang around the masses. Um, I generally hang around my tribe, uh, which are P TCP people. Uh, there's no judgments on that. I just know whose energy makes me Whose energy, I'm waiting for a question, guys. Whose energy that I find that's the most nurturing and what energy is the most taxing? Because I can feel people. I'm clear sentient. I can feel people. I am not around negative Nancys. No way, no how, never. Can't handle it. Okay, thank you. Well, we're going to do some things to the podcast as well. But guys, come on, the questions you had. Uh, yes, Florence Covell Shen is great. I recommend her, her to a lot of people. I wish that's one book I wish I would have written about 120 years ago. Watch, guys. Come on, hit me up. I'll wait for you guys. How do you get amongst the positive people? You attract them. We attract what we are. I don't allow negative Nancy's in my life, even friends and former friends and family. Don't allow it. Okay, um, 
number one strategy is listen to number episode seven in the podcast. Okay. Uh, that's a good start, but there's not everything there, but that's a great start for you is what happened? Where'd all the questions go? What am I missing? Yeah. No, it's a hundred percent guarantee on the training. Yeah. I'm not telling you the biggest takeaway, but number one, it's going to be different for different people. Secondly, I got to make money so I can pay my bills. I got an entire team of people. Uh, plus, I spend a buttload on marketing. Uh, I mean, this ain't free. To, to me, coming to Instagram is free, but guess what? Everything else, my team to take this and run with it and edit it, it, it costs money. Um, the way I live my life is most of the money that comes into my business, I don't spend it on myself. Uh, I've got everything I need in life. I'm healthy, healthy and happy, and I've got everything I need. Is I use it to build my team so I can reach more people. Next TCP, guys, I'm here for, no, let's, let's do some coaching today. Come on, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to work. Uh, next TCP training starts in uh, next month. If you're on my list, you'll get emails about it. 30-day audio? I don't, I can't, Moet audio, I don't know. Guys, why am I, there are tons of questions coming, and now there's no questions. How about this? Somebody just please ask me a question. Some kind of coaching question. Where are you? Let me, let me do this. Where are you stuck? How about that? Raise your hand. Tell me where you're stuck. I'm going to work you through it. Unless it's a couple of the main pillars for next week. And you got to tune in. Guys, let me, let me go there for a second until the next question comes. And I'll stop in the, mid, in the middle. Is that a lot of people want things for free. And you get here. You get what you give in life. I used to be that way. I wanted everything for free. Where is it? Where can I get it the cheapest? You know, who's, where can I get this? Where can I, can I download this free? It's the wrong way to show up in life. It doesn't work. Number one, you get what you pay for. And secondly, I love putting money, money out. Like in Florence Scovel's Shen. Yeah, but I don't know how to get back to the other questions. Guys, I'm a, I'm a newbie when it comes to scrolling here. I don't know how to get back to them. Let me see if I can scroll back here is I'm glad, I'm, I'm looking here as I'm going back, I'm glad to spend money. The reason why is what I put out comes back to me. Florence Scovel Shen said, and I've always I've lived by this the last 10 years or so, viewing requests, what you put out is what comes back. So I'm going uh, to keep an eye open there while I'm scrolling back. I need somebody, somebody on my team to teach me how to use Instagram. Because I, I want to chat. I don't want to blabber anymore. Thank you. I appreciate you. Let me see what else. Think about that. And what I used to do is I would hoard money and I would try to, I would try to save my way to money and I'd penny pinch my way to money. Wrong way to show up. Wrong. I mean, I can't even emphasize big Vegas letters. Wrong way to show up in life. What you hoard gets hoarded from you. Think about that. What you hoard gets hoarded from you. And one of the things that I've learned, I'm scrolling here looking for more questions. I invited somebody. What I'm, what I'm, where I work from is let me create expansion for people. Okay, I'm started there. Let me create expansion, which means let me create more wealth in your life and let me give to that. And Brie, okay, the person I ask is unable to join. Let's see what else we can do here. I'm sorry guys. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll take an Instagram lesson before the next call, I promise, so that we're not doing this. If somebody would just ask me a question, though, I can, I can see it pop up. I hope I didn't shut you guys down. What's scrolling here? I don't want this to be a disaster live today. Sorry, guys. I'm learning on your time. But it makes me better. It makes me stronger. And next live, I've never, like I said, I'm, I'm a a newbie when it comes to IG. Guys, I don't want to babble for 20 more minutes. Can somebody please ask me a question? I, I, can't, I don't know how to get back to them. Duh. My team is proud of me <laughs> when it comes to technology. Um, I don't, here we go. Okay. Three other, let's see what happens here. Let's try Patty and Randy. Let's see what comes up there. 
Yeah, I'm just real with you guys. And, you know, for any of you that speak to other people, how do you get up for feeling not good enough and procrastinate? There we go. Hang on. Rand, is this Randy? Hi, how are you? Is this Randy? Yes. Okay, hang on, Patty. So just hang on. I, I hit you both. So Randy first. What's right. up, my brother? Hi, how are you? Hi, good. Thank you. How about you? Good. I've been listening to a lot of your, <clears throat> excuse me, podcasts. Thank you. On, uh, on money and everything else. Oh, yeah. I think you're amazing. Les Brown, I've listened to him quite a bit. And, I love him. Uh, yeah, you know what? He's so motivational. When I listened to him in, early in the mornings when I was going to work, it just brought me to another level, made me feel great. I mean, Randy, uh, let, me, let, me, let me interject there. I heard Les Brown say, I don't listen to motivators anymore. He's right? good. Yep. And he mentioned the book. I have it up here somewhere that I got 25 years ago. Okay. It's called Secret of the Ages. Okay. And I heard about that through Les Brown. And you can buy it on Audible, and it's a little bite-sized chapters, like three, five-minute chapters. Right. And for about 10 years of my life, back from maybe 2000, 2010, every morning, every morning, I would listen to a chapter right. in The Secret of the Ages. Okay. And I found that extraordinarily helpful. Okay. I mean, big time. So anyway, what's, what question do you have today? Uh, <clears throat> I'm... I'm getting closer to an older age right now. And no, you're, okay, that, number one, that's all mental. It, it's not older, but I'm coming to a different phase of my life, I should say. Okay, that. yeah. Okay, yeah. and yeah. I just want to know, like, the blockades for money, making money. I mean, I work for money, which I know I'm a slave to money. I understand yeah. that part. Yeah. And money is uh, my master, but I don't want, I want to break that chain. I want to move on in my life, and I don't want to live that kind of life like I find it's so frustrating, and it's actually uh, energy draining, actually. <coughs> yeah. Let me yeah. ask you a question. Yep. What do you want to do? I want to do something that's fulfilling. Okay. Something that you... makes me happy. Okay, so here we go. So, but what is that? You know what? Honestly, I'm not sure. I okay, think I've been looking. Wait, wait, wait. Here's the problem right here. Okay. Here's, your, here's your fail point. And I said this in most people, is right. I'll say, what do you want? And they'll say... I don't know. Right. And the problem is part of the brain called the reticular, reticular activating system yeah. only focuses on what we have in front of us. Right. So if you don't know what you want, what we do, I've been there in my life, right. what we do is we just kind of spend forever, year after year, going, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I right. don't know. I don't yeah. know. And what I learned, I'm just being transparent 100%. Yeah. Oh, about great. Yeah. seven, eight years ago, I got into a rut. I've coached for a lot of years. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I still want to, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I want to do. And I went through a rut having, I have clients and all that. I went through a rut for about a year and I said, okay, things have got to change. Right. And I said, here's the thing. I don't know what I want, but what I said was to myself, something always leads to something. Right. And I knew if I did something different, something might open up. That would be like, this is it. Yeah. And to tell you absolutely the truth is the TCP program that I'm known for now, which thousands of people have gone through it, came from me being stuck and saying, I don't know what I want to do, but I just got to go. Here's the thing. I have to go do something. Right. And that something led to the group TCP. Okay. So what I'm telling you is you're in the rut. I've been there. I've, well, I don't know. I don't know. Right. Until you do something, you won't break out of that rut. Right. We'll talk five years from now, and you'll be telling me the same thing. Yeah. You're so right. you've got to do something. So I would ask you, number one, what do you love to do? Uh, Forget money. No, don't tell me what you think you can do. Sorry right. for interrupting. Right. Don't tell me what you think you can do or I would do it if I had to. No. What do you love to do? I love to be around animals, actually. Okay. So what I look at is how can you make money, sustain yourself to whatever degree you want, working with animals? Right. No, there's no right. I'm telling you, here's your formula. I'm telling yeah. like a friend right with you. Yeah. Here's your formula. And what we do, for example, Randy, when I had uh, COVID, I had a nurse come to the house. Now, I needed nursing last year, and I value nurses big time. Yeah. But a lot of them are stuck in a system they don't like. Right. Um, it's all bureaucratic. It's all the hospital, this and that. Yeah. They hate their jobs, but they're making decent money. Okay. The nurse who comes to my house 
literally each time she'd come, it'd be like 500 bucks thereabouts. Right. And she works her own schedule. And all she does is deliver the, the injections of NAD and glutathione, whatever it is, and vitamin C. She works her own hours on her own time when she wants. She's self-employed. And I guarantee you, she probably makes a buck fifty a year doing it. Right. But see, she's in the field that she loves. So what I'm telling yes. you is what we as human beings don't do, been there, done that, is where I notice people hit a wall is they're not creative enough. Right. They just stop. I don't know how to do it. Let me just yeah. stop. And what I'm telling you is what do we need in the world? I'm a dog lover. You talking dogs, cats, horses? What are you talking? Yeah. I, I used to work with horses, actually. I, I actually had my farrier's license back a few years ago. Okay. And I, I, lear- I learned the trade in Holland, actually. Okay, let me, let me share a thought with you, okay? Is I promise, I give you my word on this. I know this. Number one, there's a lot of money in the world, and there are a lot of people that have a lot of money. What that means, there's a market, okay? There's always a market for you. And I'm going to tell you something right now that I promise you is the truth because I've watched it. There are people right this moment looking for what you do. Right. But they don't, they can't hire you because they don't know about you. Right. Until, Randy, scary as hell, I know. Until you put yourself out there, hey, world, this is what I do. This is who I am and this is what I can do for you. Yeah. Until you put that out there, nothing will change for you. Right. Let me yes. ask you another question. Yes. Are you afraid, to, are you afraid to sell? Uh, I'm not really afraid. I just don't know enough about it. You don't need to know. Speak from the heart. Okay. I think I could. I know you could. Now, here's the thing. What I tell people, and I've, I've lived this, I've walked it, talked it, trained a lot of people, and I've seen results, is whatever you want to do in life, at whatever level you're at. So, for example, probably most people on here couldn't afford me as a one-to-one coach. I don't even do one-to-one anymore. Yeah. But you know what? There are people looking to pay me 100000 bucks to coach them. That's what I've been offered, hundred grand wow. for 12 weeks of coaching. There's somebody at that level, but there's also people at the entire spectrum of levels. Yeah. And so many of us so, so often think that, well, I don't know enough yet. Let me keep learning and learning, and I'll get ready, and I'll get ready, and I'll get ready, and I'll get ready. Thank you, Leslie. And I'll get ready. But it doesn't matter where you are on the spectrum. There's somebody looking for you right now. So there's a friend of mine. I, I, I'm a, I don't want to just unplug. Um, Give me one second. I want to read this to everyone, okay? Sure. Yeah, I want to grab something. Yeah. I'm coming. Hang on. Dang it. When I, here it is. Here it is. Hang on. This is a gift that a friend gave me in Dallas. And by the way, where do you live? I live in Angus, Ontario, Canada. Okay. Well, you have horses there, right? Oh, there's lots in the area. There you go. There's your market. Okay. This is from a friend of mine. Her her name is Virginia Cook. Now, this woman is 83 years old now. And for many years, 50 years, she was president of one of the largest residential real estate companies in the United States. And she started her own company. Um, in 2000 and within a few years she was the second largest private real estate company in Texas she was my she hired me as her coach but she became my mentor what I'm going to share with you and everyone is the key because I've watched her build a multi-billion dollar company on this one page okay and she taught me this and it transformed my life she, she gave me this. She wrote it at Christmas time in 2010. Wow. And she wrote me this. And this is from a woman who, according to NAR, the National Association of Realtors, is recognized as one, was, is one of the top 20 thought leaders in the United States real estate. The woman's a powerhouse. Okay. So you ever wonder, Jim, how you will change the world? Here is a question I ask myself frequently, and I always come up with the same answers. Love, caring, energy, time, talent, respect, etc. 
I thrive on trying to be successful. Drucker, meaning Peter Drucker, he's a business writer. Drucker wrote, success, as it seems, as it seems, you will achieve the greatest result in business and career if you drop the word achievement and you replace it with contribution. Success for me is not how high I have been, but at the end of the day, how many people I have brought with me. This woman's an icon in Dallas business, friends of Ross Perot. She was uh, the famous American quarterback, Roger Staubach. She was his mentor yep. on the board of directors at SMU. I mean, this woman's an icon. So achievement, you replace it with contribution. So what I tell people is what you, what you do, we'll touch more on this in the money program, with what you do, how can you contribute to the expansion of someone else? That's for you, Randy, but everyone too, but you. Yep. With what you do, the horses, how can you contribute to the expansion in someone's life? Meaning, how can you make their life better? Because right. when you can make somebody's life better, I give you my word. They will pay you all day long. Okay. Does it, all this make sense? Any questions yep. about it? No, that makes sense. First step is taking the first step. And you've been using, well, you've been using excuses. Is, well, I don't know. Yes, you did. No, I don't want to hear I don't know because you know. You know what turns you on. Yep. But it's, it's a defense mechanism where if we don't know, then we never have to do anything. And we never yep. have to risk any uncomfortable situation. Right. Life is outside of your comfort zones. And I know you might have heard that before. Yep. Nothing ain't going to change until you step outside that comfort zone. Well, I remember something that Les Brown said. He says, if you do things hard, life will be easy. If you oh. do things easy, life will Life's be, hard. be hard. Now, Randy, I kind of listened to that, and I've kind of resonated with that. And let me share something with you. I don't know your age category. I'm 58. Uh, this, okay. Here's the thing. Number one is you're probably going to live another 25 years or more. Just I hope, life expectancy. I hope, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, me too. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. And here's the reality. That's a lot of t- It's not a lot of time, but it's a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And I'm 56, and the way that I look at it is I don't know how long I'm going to be on the planet, but every day I'm going to make freaking count. Yep. Every day I'm going to train a horse, or I'm going to teach somebody how to ride, or I'm going to teach somebody how to care of um, Every day I'm going to do what I love, yep. because what else is there in life? Yep. And you're worried because you're trapped in the money game. You're worried about the financial security, yep. okay? But you know what? You're trading your life. You're trading your life for that. Yeah. And then ask yourself, well, is that a good investment? Do I want to invest my life in a paycheck? Or do I want to, I want to invest it in doing something in the world? And I'll tell you this, another promise. And I don't make promises lightly because I've just seen this. You do something you love and you charge the value you're worth, which was the lesson for me. You do something you love, you charge the value you're worth, and that worth will come back to you. The mistake I used to make is not charging enough many years right, ago. Right. Or I would, I'd just do it free or let me just throw it. Guess what? I was devaluing myself. Yes. When you devalue yourself, the universe is going to devalue you also. Right. Yep. Any questions? Nope. That's great. There's a lot in here for you, my brother. I yep. promise you. Just go back and listen. Why am I saying I promise you? But it, there is. That's how passionate. Yeah. Yep. I've seen it. I've done it. I have my whole life as an experience. Go back and watch this a few times. Do what I share with you to do. A year from now, you and I will be having a very different conversation. Okay. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks. much. Be safe today. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Okay, Robin. Is that Robin? I think. Is that, is that your name? You're next. If you'll click off there, yep. we'll get the next person here. Next up. Oh, you're as bad as I am. I know. So crying out loud, just hit the stop button somewhere. Somewhere. I don't know where it is. You like me. Leave. Somebody sorry. tell him where the stop button is. Randy, it's on your left. You're... Sorry, there you Okay, what's up? Yes, I made a note. My team reminded me. Jim, save the line. Okay, who's up? Uh, it seems like it's me. Yep, it's you. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Not me. I've been talking way too long. It's you. <laughs> okay. Well, it's so great to be able to talk to you directly, Jim. I'm okay. I'm excited. Thank you. Thank so you. this time that you were talking, it I had some time to relax a little bit because I was so nervous. Just us. <laughs> Well, um, my question is, I have been living as a housewife, a stay-at-home mom, for more than eight years now. Stop right there. I'm going to interrupt you so I can coach you through this. What does that mean? Tell me the identity of a housewife. Yeah, well, I I left my job. Um, I had only one child, and I had two more children. And I have been living only depending on my husband's income. I think I know where you're going to go with this. But what I'm exploring now is, yeah, let's go a little further. I'm going to come back here. Okay, keep on going. All right. Well, I'll try to, to do some kind of business. Uh, but it, I, I was just not confident enough. I, I was actually a newbie. I was trying to do something just by myself. I was not. Um, I didn't have a mentor or, or anyone who could help me. Okay. And everything just flopped. And, well, I stopped trying to do anything. <coughs> and I have been investing in courses, um, business courses, um, yeah. online marketing courses. I have been Stop. trying to pay them. I don't want you to, I, I don't want you to do <laughs> any more of that for right now. Okay. okay. So you said you tried some kind of business, right? Yes. What did you try? Well, it it was a website. It was called. It, it's in Spanish. It's called Baby and Family, but in Spanish. Okay. Uh, and the intention was that I was going to interview people about how to take care of babies, uh, how to take care of the mom when she's pregnant, you know, things like that. Okay. Everything related to babies and family and nutrition. Let's go here first. I'm interrupting for a reason for time. Is a lot of people want to go in the business, but they don't adopt the identity of a business person. For many years, I was a hypnotist and made about a hundred grand a year, maybe a buck fifty a year. Never really made any large money like I do now. It's because I always saw my, here's a mistake a lot of people get into. It, a lot. Is they think I'm good at XYZ, teaching accounting or mothering or hypnosis or whatever. And they see themselves as a practitioner of that as opposed to being a business person who does that. And everyone listening, does it make sense? You have to see yourself, and now it's a huge shift for me, as a business person who does XYZ service, okay? Now then you have to look at what are the characteristics of a good business person? Well, what business person do you know of? What business stays in business without making money? And I used to be like, let me just help everybody. And then I recognized that the only way to be a good business person is to charge for what I'm worth. And I have to charge, and I have to run it like a business and set up my bank accounts like a business, and I have to think like a tangible business. And so my identity became I am a business person because if I'm not a business person, I can't do the rest of this, which is what I love, which is what you do, the baby stuff, you love it, but you can't do that if you're not a business person. So my question is, do you see yourself as a business person? No. Okay, so what happened? Okay, so what happened? I see a lot of this. So what happened is you think, I'm going to become a business person. Yet you never adopt the thought processes or behaviors of a business person. And then your business, then your business, which you try to do with an open heart, does what you said. It flops. Why? Because you're not thinking like a business person. Anytime we exchange money for goods and services, doesn't matter what it is, that's called a sale, okay? And we have to be, which I am, I've taught it for many years, I don't now, but I'm a salesperson. 
Because if I don't sell my transformational coaching program or the money master class, which has huge value for people, I'm going to be broke. And if I'm broke, how can I help anybody, which is what I love? What are you hearing here? I'm sorry? What are you hearing? Can you say that again? What are you hearing pertaining to you? What am I hearing? Mm-hmm. I, I don't understand the question. Okay. Does this make sense to you? Yes. Now, the thing is, I – that was – Several years ago, um, okay. I stopped it more than five years ago. I never created any product. I was interviewing people, making videos. I eventually I started a YouTube channel and I started uh, uploading the videos to YouTube. Um, but I never really created any product. I How never come? tried to sell anything. How come? The, my, why? Yeah. I don't know. I just, I no, just no, wanted no. to. No, no, no. When you coach with me, I don't know is not an acceptable answer. It's a lazy answer. Okay. You do know. How come okay. you didn't create anything? <sighs> don't think. I thought that maybe, it. yeah, maybe I thought that just with the YouTube channel, it would be enough. No. I was too afraid of trying to sell anything. Stop right there. I I didn't see myself doing that. Here's the thing. Is when we promote the transformational coaching program, it's an investment, okay? And the way that I look at sales is this. And I teach sales for a lot of years. Um, As I'm I'm great at sales, but I used to be afraid to ask for money, okay? So it might be a money issue with you, first. Secondly, is if I can help you, here's where I work from. If I can help you live a better life, I have a moral and ethical obligation to sell to you what I have that can help you. This is a pen. I don't know. It's two bucks, whatever. This helps me. I mean, I make notes. If somebody said, you know, I mean, pay me two bucks, not a problem. Why? Because it helps me. Everything in your life, you look at things you bought, you buy them because they help you in some way or they give you pleasure. And pleasure can be also helping. So the way that I look at it is I help people change their lives with my transformational coaching program. It's my moral and ethical obligation to say, here's the program, here's what the investment is, because I know it's going to change their lives. Okay? So like somebody said, I'm afraid of selling. I am not afraid of selling because I don't call it selling. What I'm doing is I'm changing their life. Why wouldn't I value myself to get paid enough for that? Back to you. Why wouldn't you value what you teach enough to say, hey, buddy, come on. I, you know, I did this for you. I changed your life. I did this. I did this. Fork over the money. And you don't say it like that, obviously. But that's the mindset I want you to have is that you have to get, this is what I talk about a lot inside my group, is the reason you're, you, did, you weren't successful, one of the reasons, is you didn't value the value you create in life. If you, all of you, if you don't value the value you create, then why would the universe value it and give you money back? That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And I don't worry about confidence. Um, I used to. I don't. Because like I was telling, I think, Randy a couple of minutes ago, is there's somebody looking for me somewhere right this minute. And there was, you know, years ago. But many years ago, when I taught sales, I was one of the best there is at it. Seriously. I mean, I've got amazing te- – I help billion-dollar companies. But I never really saw myself that way. So I never really charged what I should have been charging. Why would the universe value you or even my client value me if I don't value myself? I didn't value the value I was creating. We have, this is huge. We have to value, we have to value the value we're creating. Because if I don't value my own work, then why would you value it? And then on top of that, I never worry about confidence. 
Because guess what? If they're calling, I'll just tell you guys the truth. But just I'm, everything I tell you guys is true. But it's kind of hope it's not arrogant. Twenty years ago, I used to live in New York City, and one of my clients was at Rockefeller Center, which is the most expensive real estate in Manhattan. And we're sitting. He wanted me to teach him subconscious influence, how to get into people's heads for sales. And we were sitting there one more, one Saturday morning in September. His cell phone rings, and he answers it. And I hear the entire call, and it's he and the sitting president of the United States. And I said, is that who I think that it was? And he's like, who did you think it was? And this was many years ago. And I said, it sounded like President Clinton. He goes, yeah. He goes, and he said some other things. Later, I told a friend of mine, this is going to come back to you here. I told a friend of mine, Chris, I feel so far out of my league. I mean, this guy's at Rockefeller Center. He's talking to the president of the United States about what they're going to do for Thanksgiving. I'm so far out of my league. My friend said something to me that changed my life, and I'm going to share it with you. Very simple. He said, Jim, if you were out of your league, you wouldn't be there in the first place. Oh, wow. So that's where I work from, is I just do what I do, and I do it the best that I can possibly do. After that, it's out of my hands. Why do I need confidence? I don't. I just go do what I do. And when you go do, Virginia told me one day, back in 2010 when the economy crashed, and she goes, a lot of my, this changed my life. She goes, a lot of my agents are complaining about how bad the economy is. She goes, if they would just go out and try to help someone today, they'd make over 100000 bucks a year. So that's where I work from in my personal life. Who can I help? Who can I help? Who can I help? I don't worry about the money. I don't worry about the confidence. I don't worry about what people think about me because you know what? I help people. Can't help everyone. A lot of people don't like me. That's fine too. I mean, I know I'm an acquired taste. I'm direct. I know that. A lot of people don't like me. That's fine. They'll go find somebody else they do like. A lot of people do like what I do. And guess what? Guess what? Is that I help them. That's all I got to focus on. Not how good I am, not the economy, not who's doing what I'm doing. I don't even have any competition. I work in the personal development field. And people will say, you got a lot of – no, I don't. I have no competition. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because you are your own unique style. I mean – I mean, there's no other Jim Fording. No. Exactly. But there's no other you. Think about that. There's no other you. And no one can do what you can do. No one. So what I look at is I go do what I do because I love to, I, guys, I love doing these. And I'm going to do a lot more. I love doing these. This is what I do. This is who I am. Some people are going to call me a jerk. Some people are going to call me stupid. Some people, well, all these things. Don't care. Why? Because I'm doing what I love to do. And somebody says build your confidence. You build your confidence. There's this illusion is I need confidence. Wrong. Confidence comes from competence. So, for example, do you know how to wash dishes? Yes. yes. I just, I'm just picking yeah. anything, okay? Do you, do you know how to dry? Yeah. I'm learning. Okay, good. Okay. But do you know what? <laughs> Are you more confident now than when you started learning? Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. Why? Because you're building competence by doing it. Competence okay. equals confidence. So the more we just go do it, the more we naturally become confident. So I, here, remember, be, be repetitive. I just help people. Some want it. Some don't. Some like me. Some don't. But guess what? On a planet of seven plus billion people, there are enough people to like me and what I do, and I can help them, and they want to be helped for what I do, that I can make a healthy living and help a lot more people. I swear to you, on the tour, the Bible, the, the Kabbalah, whatever, on my notepad, is when you show up and you serve with an open heart and you charge your value back, that's where the gold is. Okay. I promise, I, I, I promise, that's where the gold is, okay? 
Go try it out. I'm going to be doing a lot more lives. We're going to wrap up here today. Um, thank all of you. I'm, I'm, I'm so honored and so blessed. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you from the heart. I'm so honored and so blessed. Literally, a lot of people just say slogans and lines. I mean, guys, you allow me to live my dharma. I mean, this is what I love, and this is my passion, obviously. You guys allow me to live my passion, and I can't think of any greater blessing than that, and it's because of you guys. So thank you guys so much. Everyone stay well. And on my final comment, I tell people in my transformation groups, we live in a very tumultuous world, and a world right now that's chaotic. The more that we grow and evolve, all of us here, us crazies, the more we can be an example to our friends and our families and our communities. And the more we grow and evolve ourselves, the more we can help the world around us be healthy and, 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 and everyone can live better lives. So, guys, thank you so much. And before we go, one last thing. To get out of here, do I just press the X? I got to save this. Somebody hit me. Do I just press the X to get out of here, guys? Uh, let's contribute. Yeah. Do I just press the X? I need a little Instagram help. I forgot what I did three weeks ago. Help me out, guys. Do I just hit the X or next TCP is next month? Uh, thank you. I need the help, too, because like I, don't, I can find how to exit. Yes, press the X. Okay, then I'm going to save it. Okay, guys, everyone stay well. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.